Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about placental imaging. This is the third video in this video series with title of Sonographic Evaluation and Management of Placenta Previa. The outline of this presentation include Introduction, Role of Ultrasound in Placental Evaluation, Low-Line Previa Placenta Imaging Tips and Tricks, Management, and Final Teaching Points. At first, Introduction. Assessment of placental location in the mid-trimester fetal anatomy scan is a critical component of sonographic examination as recommended by various international guidelines. Due to varying criteria used at different gestational ages, the true incidence of placenta previa is difficult to determine, and at 18 to 23 weeks it has been reported to be around 5% by transabdominal ultrasound and one and a half when evaluated by transvaginal scan. The majority result with advancing gestation with a 0.5% incidence reported at term. However, prevalence of placenta previa is on the rise and there are several risk factors for abnormal placentation, at the forefront of which is prior uterine instrumentation, whether it be caesarean delivery, DNC, or myomectomy. In addition, there are other predisposing factors to placenta previa such as multi-fetal gestation, advanced maternal age, grand multi-parity, and pregnancies resulting from assisted reproductive technology. Placenta previa is particularly prevalent among diachronic pregnancies and attributed to two implantation events covering a larger area. What is the fetal and neonatal risk of placenta previa. A higher risk for iatrogen prematurity, prenatal morbidity and mortality, mild increase in FGR and SGA fetuses. A multi-society fetal imaging forum meeting in 2014 defined a low-lying placenta as having the inferior placental edge within 2 cm from the internal os, and a placenta previa where the placenta covers the internal us. The forum also recommended abandoning the terms marginal, partial, and complete placenta previa. Presence of placenta previa increases risk of placenta accreta spectrum, which has added comorbidities. Radiologists should be aware of the increased risk and should take all precautions for diagnosis and proper management of their patients. Rule of ultrasound in placental imaging. The relationship between the placental edge and internal cervical os changes with advancing gestation. As such, it's very important not to label the patient as having a placenta previa prior to 16 weeks. The placenta migrates away from the internal os as the lower uterine segment develops and a rate of migration of 5.4 mm per week has been reported. Overall, about 90% of previas diagnosed prior to 20 weeks gestation resolve before delivery. The later in gestation that previa is identified, the higher the likelihood that it will persist until delivery. Specifically, placenta previa identified at about 24 weeks gestation persists in approximately half of cases, whereas previa identified at 32 weeks gestation persists in nearly 75%. Ultrasound plays a critical role in placement localization whether the point of care setting or during screening examinations. Several techniques can be employed to evaluate the placenta, the lower uterine segment, and cord insertion to screen for a placenta previa. It's important to note that presence of a full maternal bladder or uterine contractions may lead to false diagnosis of a placenta previa. 
if the placental edge is less than 2 cm or the placenta is felt to cover the cervix, then confirmation by transvaginal scan is indicated. In cases of persistence of a placenta previa into the third trimester, it's critical to assess for possible presence of placenta accreta spectrum. It must be kept in mind that if there were to be normalization of a low-lying placenta or a placenta previa with advancing gestation, it's important to rule out an in-swing wasa previa, which is associated with increased fetal mortality if undiagnosed Natally. Timing of the examination is the key to arriving at the correct diagnosis. As I explained before, it's very important not to label the patient as having a placenta previa prior to 16 weeks. The rate of persistence of a placenta previa is directly related to the gestational age at sonographic diagnosis, as I explained before. Low line previa placenta imaging tips and tricks. It's important to keep in mind several tips and tricks when evaluating for a low-lying or previa placenta. At first, timing of examination must be mid-trimester fetal anatomic scan starting at 16 weeks. Patient preparation, we must scan when we have empty maternal bladder. Root of scanning at first transabdominal, however, if suspicious, then transvaginal ultrasound is necessary. Machine settings Optimize overall settings for cervical assessment and the color doppler settings for placental vascularity. Optimal planes is sagittal planes. Avoid a diagnosis in the presence of a full bladder or with a uterine contraction. Other modalities, if a wasa previa is suspected, employ spectral wave doppler to confirm presence of arterial fetal vessels. Sonographic clues to diagnosis include low inferior placental edge and high presenting fetal part. Sonographic clues to persistence, placenta extends over and beyond the internal os and persistence at 32 weeks gestation. Management. Once a placenta previa is diagnosed at the mid-trimester scan, it's recommended to rescan at 32 and then at 36 weeks gestation for assessment of normalization and for documentation of persistence. In case of normalization, it's important to screen for wasa previa. In some cases, obtaining cervical lengths in asymptomatic patients may aid in management decisions. It helps identify patients at higher risk for preterm births who may hemorrhage. Whenever evaluating the cervix because of its high importance, utilizing color doppler to rule out a vasa previa. The data are inconclusive about the association of a placenta previa with fetal growth abnormalities, close surveillance of fetal growth and antenatal testing as indicated may be a consideration. Unlike placenta previa, low-lying placenta is not a contraindication to vaginal delivery. However, the risk of vaginal bleeding and need for blood transfusion are increased. There is a management algorithm can be helpful in dealing with placenta previa. If we diagnose a low-lying placenta or placenta previa, Previa, at mid-trimester scan, we must confirm by transvaginal scan. After confirmation by transvaginal scan, we must rescan transvaginally at 32 weeks gestation. If at 32 weeks gestation we found normalization of placenta previa, a screen for fossa previa is mandatory by transvaginal and color or power Doppler. If we didn't found any fossa previa, we must return to routine obstetrical care. But if we found wasa previa, there are some consideration for obstetrician, like consider streets and tocolysis, consider hospitalization at 34 weeks, and consider delivery at 34 to 37 weeks. If at 32 weeks in re-scan transvaginally we found persistent low-lying placenta or placenta previa, 
there are many considerations. At first, screen for placenta accreta spectrum, check cervical length before 34 weeks gestation, consider steroids or tocolysis at 34 to 35 weeks, we must manage maternal anemia, rescan transvaginally at 36 weeks gestation, if another one we found persistence of placenta previa, we must consider delivery at 36 to the end of 37 weeks gestation, but if we found normalization, we must screen for wasa previa. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. Incidence of placenta previa is on the rise and is directly related to the number of prior caesarean sections. It leads to serious maternal and neonatal morbidity and mortality. Screening all patients and properly determining placental locations using transvaginal sonography beyond 16 weeks gestation is critical to avoid causing undue parenteral anxiety by prematurely diagnosing a placenta previa in early gestation. OB and GYNs should be aware of placental migration and normalization of a placenta previa with advancing gestation. In case of normalization, it's important to screen for wasa previa. In case of persistence, precautionary steps should be taken to safeguard both mother and baby. Vigilance, a systematic approach and following a standardized protocol help ensure optimal outcomes. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.